Like we really believe that if a million people commit to positive change and they make it happen, we will have made the world a better place. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Seek the Joy podcast. Happy Seek the Joy Tuesday. I'm your host, Sydney Weiss, and guys, when did it become December? Like I like I just realized the other day like we are in December. Like this year has come and gone and it's so interesting because you know it's usually around this time of the year with the holidays and the new year right around the corner that we really start to think more about goals and intentions for the coming year. We think about you know what we didn't accomplish this year and what we want to accomplish next year but Something that I'm doing, and I challenge you to do it as well, is to really spend some time reflecting and taking stock of just how much you have done this year. And it can be big, it can be small, it doesn't matter, but I'm learning that it's really important to look at where we are and where we've been, you know, before we even take a dive into looking at where we want to go. And on that note, this week's new episode could not have come at a more perfect time. I'm so excited to introduce you guys to the ULA guys, Dave Braun and Troy Omdahl. They are the founders of the ULA movement and they are co-authors of the international best-selling book series that started with ULA, Find Balance in an Unbalanced World. And Dr. Dave and Dr. Troy are really renowned experts in what it means to really create work-life balance for yourself and they're really committed to changing the world with their simple yet life-changing message of ULA. And they also have embarked on the ULA Dream bus tour and this is really awesome. They go around to, I think they're almost at all 50 states at this point with their VW bus and they're collecting dreams. Their goal is to collect 1 million dreams and so you, when you see the bus, you write your dream on the sticker and you put it on the bus and guys, it is too cool. I can't wait for you to hear more about the ULA Dream bus tour and what the ULA movement is really all about. So before we dive in to this week's new episode, I have to share with you the iTunes review of the week, and this week it comes from Teresa Haddow, and it says, such a good, motivating podcast. This podcast is such an inspiration. It's so great to hear how different people search out and find happiness and how they overcome struggles to find joy in their lives. It's a great reminder that joy really is everywhere, but it's how you look at it. Teresa, thank you so much for this awesome review of the podcast. I'm so grateful and I know I've already thanked you and these reviews, guys, they mean more to me than you know and they make such a huge difference. And so if you have been enjoying this podcast or if you just started tuning in and you want to support Seek the Joy podcast, I would be so grateful if you left a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. When you do, just make sure to take a screenshot of that review and send it to sydney at seekthejoypodcast.com. I will send you our guide for infusing more joy into your life, as well as some Seek the Joy podcast stickers, really as just a way to say thank you. All right, guys, that's it. I am really excited to introduce you guys to Dave and Troy and the ULA movement. They're really taking their mission on the road with the ULA Dream bus tour, and they are so inspiring and relatable and full of so much wisdom. They're really firm believers that wherever you are in life, there is something more that is available to you, and honestly, I could not agree more. So without further ado, here is my conversation with Dave and Troy of the ULA movement. Dr. Dave, uh, known as the ULA Seeker. And I met Dr. Troy, the ULA Guru, uh, about 20 years ago, a long time ago. And um, what he did is he taught me at that time, I was a young guy, he taught me that there's a way to win at business and win at life. You can find balance in all seven areas of life. And he taught me that you don't have to follow the unbalanced world and live a life of stress, live a life of overwhelmed, live a life of just feeling out of balance. He said there's a better way and it's called the Ula life. So he introduced me to that Ula life a long time ago. And I started following the system in my uh, later 20s. And then the story kind of unraveled from there. And I'll let Dr. Troy take it from here. Yeah, it, we were just a group of guys that would go to Vegas um, once a year and step outside of the craziness of life. 
and and wanted to redefine success and say, okay, yeah, we want to make a lot of money. Yeah, we want to be successful in our careers, but we want strong marriages, great relationships with friends. We want to have joy in life, have some fun, be healthy. And we, we define success as just this overall these seven we identified seven areas that if you did that you would you would feel this thing called ooh la la or an ooh la life hmm. and um that's that's really how it started it was just a group of guys getting together and we all achieved this newly defined success at a young age and what happened was dr dave then we all went on and built our businesses and our had you know raised families and moved to different parts of the country and the world and he called me one day and said, you're not going to believe it, but, you know, I know you knew I had a successful business and, you know, I had a beautiful marriage with five kids, you know, you know, you know but that's not what it is. I'm actually, mm-hmm. I'm bankrupt and I'm divorced and I'm going to lose my business. And they just repossessed my car and I don't know what to do. And at this time at 42, I retired and moved to Arizona. And, uh, so I was retired and I'm like, well, are you doing that thing we used to do mm-hmm. that Ula thing? And he said, well, no, I kind of drifted from that. I said, go back to that. Go back to, you know, looking at your life in seven areas and say, as ugly as it is now, this is where I am. Um, but that's not who you are. That's just where you are. Where do you want to go? Like, how are you going to get out of this mess? What are your dreams? What are your goals? And then most importantly, what are the actions you're going to take to make that happen? And uh, when that happened and Dave got his ULA back, he's like, we need to we need to tell people about this. Yeah. It's so simple. It's so simple, but it's so transformational that we need to share this with people. And I'm like, you know, buddy, I'm retired. I'm kind of, <laughs> I've checked that box. I'm kind of cool. But uh, it, what do you want to do? And he said, let's just write a book. And we actually self-published our first book. Wow. And 100,000 copies later, uh, um, the Chicken Soup for the Soul publisher contacted us said, we love what you guys are doing and let's um, let's take this globally. And that's really the short version of how a group of guys meeting in Vegas to just be better versions of ourselves turned into this ULA movement. That's amazing. And I love how you two really have played off of each other, really, it sounds like throughout your journey and have been there as a resource and a support system for the other. And uh, Troy, it really sounds like, Dave, when you were in that difficult space, you know, it was about relying on that friendship and that support and the principles um, that you guys have developed. And so for anyone that's not familiar, what are those seven key areas that you focus on? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know Troy was going to go to the dark so fast. <laughs> that was super quick. I'm sitting here listening to it like, what a, what a poor guy. And I'm like, oh, that's me. Um, but yeah, no, said, the seven areas that Dr. Troy taught me, uh, truly being the guru that he was, he said there's seven areas of life that you have to balance and grow your whole life in order to find a life of balance. And he said it's your fitness, your finances, your family. Your field, which is your career, faith, friends, and fun. So some people are really worried for business, which is field, and they're going to go crush their business and make a ton of money and find themselves divorced and find themselves unhealthy. Or you're going to be all about your family and all about having fun with your family, or let's say your faith, but then you don't have enough money and you're stressed out about money and you're fighting with your, your spouse about money and you're not happy at work, whatever it is. So where people find themselves is they find themselves looking at their life in these seven areas and saying, all right, I got this fitness thing right. And I got this family thing right, but I don't like my job and our money stresses us out. And that's where I need to start to work. So when Dr. Troy talked to me about these seven Fs back in the day, I looked at my life and I was just coming out of school, over $100,000 of student loan debt, yeah. just worked on, okay, I got to get a job. And I was married, had a couple kids. And I started looking at this whole thing we call the Ula wheel, like this balance wheel of where you are in these seven areas. And I'm like, okay, I'm weak in this, weak in this, weak in this. I'm better in this. I got this. And then you start making goals in these seven areas and start taking action on that. And that's what I did in my 20s, found success, built a big house, racquetball court in the house, cool cars, everything. But Dr. Troy pretty mm-hmm. told you that, you know, in my 30s, I went through a divorce, bankruptcy, 2008, 9, and 10, lost wow. all my house, everything. And I got back to Dr. Troy and he went back really simply. And this is for everyone listening. Really simply, you have to look at your life in these seven areas. And you have to say, okay, where am I in these seven areas? Where do I want to go? And how am I going to get there? The three simple steps. And then follow that plan. And that's what I did. And as I started getting my life back on track, um, you know, we said, let's, let's write about book about this. And that's how that all came about to become a process that we used to do that turned into a book that has now turned back into a process that 
uh, millions of people are doing across the country or around the world. Where's where do people start with this if they're looking at these seven areas of their life and they're you know taking time to take stock? And I think the timing of this conversation is really interesting too with the holidays and the new year right around the corner. So so yeah, where where's a good place for people to start with these with these three steps? This is the perfect time of year for this. And yeah. and step step one is a, is an honest and that's the key an honest self assessment between you and you. Um, we all portray an image on social media to the world that it's like that smiling Christmas card that my life is amazing and the seven highlights of the year. Hmm. Uh, the the reality is, if you really if you really want to go somewhere, if you really have a big goal or a big dream, it's impossible to go there without being a hundred percent realistic with where you are right in this moment. So you may look at your relationship, you may look at your marriage, and go, you know what? It's not good. <laughs> Yeah. It's not, it's, it's somehow we got to this point where I don't know how we got here, but you have to call it out. And sometimes you have to just place it on the table and walk around it and grieve it and get angry and go and mourn mm-hmm. that this is where it is, but you have to confront that's where it is. Same thing with money. It's like, yeah, you know, everyone's rocking and rolling and portraying an image of crushing it financially. The reality is there's bills stacking up in the corner and this, this pile of student loan debt and consumer debt that you don't even want to confront or add up. The reality is I don't have, I'm not making the money I want, or I do have this debt. So you have to, the hardest part of step one is truly getting to that point of, of being honest with yourself, with where you are in these seven areas. As, as this community of, of people pursuing an ULA life has developed, we developed um, this wheel. It's a simple, it's a simple first step. And if you go to ULA life, dot com slash step one, S T E P and then the number one step one. Yeah. You can answer you can answer just questions, ten questions in these seven categories, and it'll reveal where you need to start because I'm I'm driven by just naturally by business and money. I mean it's just how I'm wired. Yeah. I grew up that way. It's what it's what I think about. It's the magazines I read, it's the blogs I read about personal finance and business. But I have to be reminded that I'm doing this for my family because I love my family just as much as everyone else. But if I'm left to myself, I will just naturally pursue the things that that I'm interested in. And if I go build an amazing business and have millions of dollars, but I'm alone because my wife left me and my kids are distant, that's not what life's about. Right. So the cool thing about the wheel is it exposes your blind spots. It exposes the things that like, you know what? My health is slipping. My marriage is slipping. My personal finances, it just points out like, okay, there's a great place to start because the people we meet are feeling overwhelmed. They're feeling stressed. They're feeling like between mom and dad, being a mother or father and running a business and trying to stay healthy and trying to have some sort of faith walk and having joy in life and, you know, friendships. It's just, they don't even know where to start. They get paralyzed and they just living this, live the same day over and over again. And they wonder why they feel stressed. And what we're saying is, if you dig deep and identify in step one, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to reveal that blind spot. You're going to reveal where that stress lives and you may not be even confronting it, but it's like, dang, it was in money. Like this money thing must be a big deal because look at, look at on that wheel. The wheel just creates a visual image of where to start. So that's a great place for step one. I love that you guys have created all of this because I think we don't talk enough about how we really need to look at where we are right now and look at it and remember, you know, that it's temporary and that it doesn't define us. And so having a tool or a mechanism to to use that can reveal those blind spots and maybe, you know, issues or things in our lives that we're just you know, not addressing because it feels too painful in the moment. But the key really is to to look at those things. And then from there, you can build a plan. And from there, you can really take those steps to move forward. I think we're growing up in like the best of times, because right now we're talking so much about being transparent. It's like a millennial movement, just being real with who you are, what your passions are, what you want in life. And that's what we're seeing so much. And that is true, the first step. And, and I know Dr. Troy said this to me perfectly when I called him from living in a crappy motel, driving my mom's beat up old car. And I said, I'm going through a divorce, losing everything. And he said, where you are is just where you are. It's not who you are. Mm-hmm. And that works on every level. So if you're like crushing it, that's just, it's not who you are. Like who you are is how you love, how you take care of people, how you treat people, how you give back, how you make the world a better place. That's really who you are at your core. Or do you treat people poorly and not make the world a better place. That's who you are. But what you are is just, or where you are, is just where you are. 
And when I was struggling, those are such good words to hear because it was at that point that I could be transparent and say, you know what, this is where I am. And I felt completely alone at that moment of like no one else on the planet's going through a divorce. No one else on the planet could possibly go through a bankruptcy. And what I realized now when we're out on the ULA bus collecting dreams from across the country yeah. and it's like there's so many people that are struggling with weight issues or divorce or health issues or money issues, or they're just stressed out with student loans. There's thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that are on that same page. And when they start communicating with each other and they're able to say, okay, this is where we are, but it's not where we want to be in five or 10 years. And as you change where you are, you can start to develop into more of who you want to become, uh, which is a second step. But you go back in the day, I mean, you go back 30, 40 years ago, it was never cool to be transparent. It was all fake until you make it. And now it's so like, this is exactly who I am. This is exactly where I am. This is who I want to become. And this is where I want to go. And it's just an amazing time to really go chase dreams. Yeah, that level of transparency, I think it helps to remove the shame, right? And the guilt and the you know, the anger or the sadness or the burden that you know so many of us walk around with. And you you nailed it when you said, you know, at the time you thought you were the only one going through it. And I think that is what is so beautiful about social media and the time that we're living in is because so many people are just super real and transparent about where they're at. And, but it takes it, it takes time, you know, to, I think, be okay with removing that, that veil and, and, you know, stepping forward and outside of your own judgment to, you know, really dive into, you know, who you are and who you want to be. Yeah. And I, I would say that, I would say that social media is like that double-edged sword, right? Because yeah. people are posting what they are. And then all of a sudden they find themselves compare, comparing. And this is where you really draw the line in your own personal life and say, I can be transparent with who I am. Uh, or where I am in this moment, where I want to go, I can be transparent with that. But then I have to get out of the comparison game and run my own race. And again, I feel like that we are living in a time where people are starting to grab that message and, and say, okay, I don't have to compare myself to everybody else. But I know there's a lot of people struggling, again, on the bus talking to people all over the country. There's people struggling with the fact that I was really working on my business or really working on my fitness. And then I started following these people on social media and then I started feeling bad about myself. Mm -hmm. So that there, there's that comparison too, that you can't get stuck in the comparison trap of social media, but you can use social media to inspire. You can use social media to inspire others and inspire yourself, but you really have to just know that you're designed perfectly and you're just on this journey. And we're all running this journey together and, and link arms with each other and kind of work together as we move forward. And that actually, that actually brings us to step two. Like, so step one, you don't want to stay in step one too long mm. because step one in, in step one, isn't about pointing out all your weaknesses and feeling bad about yourself because yeah, I'm struggling with money and yeah, my relationship's not great. Mm. I mean, if you get stuck there, that's where it's one thing to be authentic. It's another thing to be stuck in disappointment. Yeah. It's another thing to wallow in it for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so all, all that is, it's, it, you know, you try to go there in an unemotional state and just acknowledge this is the reality of where I am. And in your heart, you know, you're designed for better. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just where you are. It's not who you are. So then you go on to step two, which is super cool because you're talking about, you guys are mentioning the comparison and the comparison trap. And you know, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt said that comparison is the thief of joy and that couldn't be more true. And, and what, what makes ULA so cool in, in none of our books will, will we tell you what your goals or dreams should be? Because everyone has different and unique goals and dreams. We, we were doing a talk in Oklahoma about like you be you. Like the goals and dreams that you have for you are unique to you. And that's what makes us beautiful as a community. And this lady, it was a huge crowd, a couple thousand people, two, three thousand people. And this lady stands up and goes, I want to be a goat farmer. And we're like, cool, because I don't <laughs> think anyone else does. Um, yeah. So that, that's, that's the point of step two is like, what do you want to do for your career? What are your financial goals? Just because the world's telling you you should be a multimillionaire, maybe you just want to pay the rent and have some money for your kid's college and, and have freedom of schedule. You know, what, what do you do for fun? Is it goat farming or is it quilting or is it golfing or is it travel or photography? Like really take some time in step two to, to remove the noise of what your parents wanted, what your siblings wanted, what society's telling you. And like, you know what, if I really go between me and me, what do I want for my life in these areas? Yeah. And that's a cool place to, to go from where you are and say, okay, this is, these are the goals and dreams I have financially. These are the goals and dreams I have for my career. These are the goals and dreams I have for fun. And it's a beautiful place to spend some time, especially this time of year, say, okay, what do I want for my life in these seven areas? 
I love what you just said about tuning out the noise of what other people have said you should do or shouldn't do or whatever that might look like and really taking stock of like what you love and what your passions are and and what lights you up and I think that really also leads us so beautifully to this dream tour that you've been on because I think when you do take that time to take stock of what you love to do, how you want to spend your time, it then I think puts you in a place of being willing to dream or push yourself to dream. And so I'd love to know from you guys, do you feel like you are now doing what it is that you maybe initially dreamed that you wanted to do? And I'm going to take this one and I I want Troy to chime in on this because it's a really unique story for Dr. Troy because uh, he was 100% fully retired with houses around the world and and living his ULA life. And I, I drug him out of retirement hmm. to do this. So I think he would have a really good uh, perspective on that question that you asked. But for me, it's it, when, I am, when I'm in this moment of uh, talking about ULA, sharing ULA, going around the Dream Tour, which the Dream Tour is really designed around step two. Yeah. And it's what are your dreams and goals for your life? Write them down, stick them on the side of the bus, and we're going to carry them across the country and around the world for you. Um, and that bus right now, it's a V-dub surf bus, which is, which represents freedom for all the listeners that don't know what it is. Yeah. And it has, it's on our 24th layer of sticker, about 120, 130,000 stickers that on the bus. That is amazing. 24 yeah. layers. That's incredible. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going about 55 miles an hour and it's getting slower with every layer of stickers, but it's, <laughs> it's working its way across the country. Um, but I can honestly say there's, there's not a better thing on the planet to do than to get on that bus and drive around city to city, state to state, meet people at whether it's book signings or media events or gas stations or donut shops or restaurants, whatever it is, just meet people. And they come up to the bus and they're like, what is this? First of all, they ask for selling weed and we say no. (laughs) And and Troy says, hope not dope. That's cool. And then (laughs) then they say, what is this bus all about? And it's, it's about dreams. It's you have to get back to dreaming. It's not what your mom told you or your dad or teachers or preachers. It's what do you want to do with your life? Where you are is where you are, but what do you want to do with your life? What are your dreams and goals for your life? And I, I've said this a couple of times, we live in just an amazing time right now to capitalize on that because of, because of social media, because of online, if you want to build your business, um, you can live wherever you want. You can work from home, you can, their jobs, the world is so connected. Um, and, and we hand them a Sharpie and a sticker. And I would say 60, 70% of the time, they look at that sticker and they have no idea what to write down. Wow. And they, they had dreams when they're in 15, 16, 17, when they're in high school, they had dreams and they get a little beat up in college and they get a little beat up by the real world and they're 25, 26 years old and they sit there and they look at the sticker and they say, I have no idea what I want to do for my life. And, and a lot of times with tears in the eyes, they start thinking back, what do I really, what's authentically me and what I want to do. And they, they come up with that thing and they write it on a sticker and they stick it on the side of the bus. And you see that little sparkle in their eye. You see that passion fill back up inside them. That is the most amazing experience. So yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if we could have ever imagined it. I don't know if you could have sat around a boardroom and said, let's mm-hmm. take a bus that goes 50 miles an hour and drive it around everywhere and collect dreams. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but it fit into the story so well. And it's been the, the, my favorite part, but I'd love to hear Dr. Troy's yeah. feedback. Yeah, I, I actually, I actually have a, so as you're talking, I kind of am reflecting on the past few years <laughs> because I, I've uh, been a goal setter since in high school. You know, I remember, watching my dad work three jobs to provide a very middle-class life for me and my three siblings. And so my mom could stay at home. And I remember thinking back, like, you know, that was, I was so grateful to have a house and food and the occasional vacation, but what I really wanted was time. And I remember saying, I'm going to be debt-free and retired and writing it down in 11th grade. I'm going to be debt-free and retired by the time I'm 40. Mm -hmm. And, and it took me until 42. But the point is I never lost sight of that dream. And I think what happens is life beats us up and we, we hit a set a goal and it doesn't happen or, you know, circumstances happen, something's in our control, sometimes out of our control. And we just, between the clutter of all of that, we've, the, the dream is somewhere in the distance and it's barely visible anymore. And I got so, so goal focused on that. And I, we, these ULA principles, we've been living for, for years. I and mean, we used to meet in Vegas in the early nineties. And then when I was retired, and then it was like, we need to share this with the world. I'm kind of like, go for it, man. I mean, you can do that. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, you know, your, your dreams, your dream. Mine, I'm kind of cool. 
but he said, Hey, you know, you're big into this Ula thing. Right. And I'm like, of course, man, like this is the only way, like, I think you, this is what everyone needs to be doing is to be living a balanced life, a fulfilled life because everyone else is finding emptiness at the end. And he's like, well, go down the categories. Cause there's seven categories he goes fitness. Okay. You're doing okay. there. finance I'm crushing that family. Good. He goes field, which is career. He said, we'll come back to that one. <laughs> um, faith, friends, and fun. He said, let's go back to that field, the career one. So what do you, what are you doing? What are you doing in this moment to add value to the world? And I'm like, hmm. Um, like, what are you doing to serve others? What do you do? He said, you have things that other people can benefit from. What, what are you doing? You know, if you're, if you're into this Ula thing, you're six for seven, you know, you're not seven of seven. I'm like, good point. Um, and hey, this is the weirdest thing. Like, um, it wasn't bad retired, like playing golf and hanging out with my kids and traveling. Yeah, yeah. But I've never, you talk about when you find that thing, like that purpose, this, I 100% believe I'm on the planet for this reason. And Dave is too, for that reason. Like, I just know when we're doing this, this is that space. Yeah. This is, this is where I need to be. And we talk to people all the time on the tour. And many of your listeners are probably the same way. We're like, you know, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't, hey, I just move forward. And sometimes you'll move left. Sometimes you'll move right. Sometimes you're being prepared for something you don't even see yet, yeah. but move forward. And when you're in that space or going that direction, you will, you will sniff it out. Like it just, it feels different. It feels like, well, I'll have jobs. Everyone will have jobs and that's fine. Those are preparing you for something. When you have a job and even if it's not your dream job, it's just paying the bills, do it with honor, show up early, stay late, you know, put your head down and do the good work. But at the same time, in the back of your brain, say, what do I want to do with my life? And start devising a plan for it. Because if you can get to that spot, that's why the word Ula life comes from Ula la. Yeah. If you can come to that spot where all seven areas, your money, your relationship, your health, your career, your faith, you're having fun and joy. Man, that's, that's the goal. That is the goal. Because I, I found that I've never worked harder, never worked harder. And I built some cool businesses. Than, than we have since Ula, but I've also never felt more fulfilled. I love that you just brought that up about purpose and how you guys really feel like, you know, this is what you're meant to do. Because when I was preparing for this interview, for this conversation, that was really something I wanted to ask you guys was if you felt like this is what you're on the planet here to do. And I think the minute when you connect with that, where it lights you up in a different way, you know, there's like a joy and a passion there and you, you really don't mind, you know, putting in those long hours or doing that extra, whatever it might be. And, and it, so it's really amazing to hear that this is really, you know, what you're here for and, and you can feel it. Yeah, it's, it's, a different, it's a different, you're just not watching a clock. Yeah. I mean, you're doing it because you really believe. And the cool thing is you overcome in the book, we talk about blockers, but you overcome laziness, you overcome fear, you overcome all the blockers when you're so passionately connected to your purpose. And that's what I, that's what we would encourage people to do is like, what is that thing for you? It doesn't even have to make sense all the time yeah. because, you know, I, you know, when I was younger, it was like, oh, I just love helping people. It was vague. You know, I, I get, I get joy out of seeing others do well. But it's evolved into like ULA. Um, but when you find that thing, and everyone's got the thing. Right now, as we're, as we're being interviewed, I'm in my wife's jewelry shop. Makes no sense. She was a teacher. Mm. But man, when she, but when she's in a jewelry shop, she's in that spot. And I'm like, baby, I don't know what that means, but do more of that. Because yeah. when you're in that spot, you get a look in your eyes and you come out of that like, that's what you're supposed to be doing. What that means right now, I don't know. But it'll reveal itself if you keep pursuing that. So as your listeners try to find if they're struggling with stress, they're struggling with being overwhelmed. Um, try to tap into that. Like, again, go back to step two and say, what do I want for my life? Not just in my career, but in all seven areas. I love that. I think that's a really good place for so many people to start. And it sounds like the tour has just been a really incredible experience for you guys, but also for everybody that you meet. And it sounds like it's really interactive and you've had a chance, you know, to talk with people and see where they're at and really connect with them about their dreams. When did the tour start? Um, I, I, I don't have to go with Troy. What year was that when the tour started? Every year we pick like kind of a route that we're going to take. And we, we get the bus, let's say Florida towards the winter, we start doing the Southern States and move up. But I think we're on year two, or this is going to be our third tour. I'm not sure, but it started off in Coronado Island in California. And the wow. first sticker right off the, right off the coast of San Diego. And the first sticker was Troy and I, uh, grabbed a sticker and we wrote on there to Jane, to change the world, the word. And we put it right underneath the door handle on the driver's side. So we'd always remember when we grab onto that door and we get in that bus, 
our mission is to change the world, the word, uh, ULA. And it started there. And by the time we start driving up the Pacific Coast Highway, up the coast of California, one of the most beautiful drives, everybody should do that. And by the time we got to San Francisco, we were one layer thick. Wow. And I don't know what year that was. Troy's really good with numbers. He's the guru. He's, he's, he's just <laughs> chomping at the bit to say, I know exactly the day of the year. Um, but but it was, the, the experience is like, yeah, just amazing. We're, we come to the end of it every year. And we ended at Ula Palooza in Vegas, the first weekend in December. The bus will be there. Um, it's been across the country this year. Um, we have our two-day event there. And then we go back with our families. Then we plan the next year. Oh, but awesome. I, I mean, as long as we can legally drive, um, <laughs> I feel like we're on tour uh, with, that tour, with, the, with the Ula bus because it's, it's just an amazing thing. But. Oh, you it, can it, well, no, I just the, the bus is the coolest thing, and, and I know many of your um, listeners are into you know personal development and being a better version of themselves, and many are into businesses too. Yeah. I, it, this is like an ambiguous. Um, it's almost hard to wrap your head around, but I mean, you, if you can get a part of something that's bigger than yourself and it's not profit driven, and I know there's bills to pay, and I know there's things to do, and you know everyone has to make their money, but that that's the bus makes no sense. Like the bus makes, we're on our third engine. Um, you know, there's no heat, no, no air. Oh, the, man. the steering works half the time. It barely slows down. It doesn't even stop unless it hits something. I mean, the bus is like, the bus is, is unique, but what the bus is, is hope for people we're meeting. And we, we put a goal to collect a million dreams because we believe yeah. this wholeheartedly that if we can stop at a gas station or a donut shop or a coffee shop or a park, and we can tell someone, look them in the eye, say, you might feel overwhelmed right now. You might feel stressed. You might feel like there's not enough hours in the day, but there's something amazing inside of you that the world needs. What is that? Yeah. Like, what is your big dream? And if we can get them to that point where they go, you know what? If like no one's watching, we don't watch what they write down. If they can write down their big, scary dream and slap it on our bus and they make it happen when we roll out of their city and a million people do that, not only will they become better, but the, they'll put off this light around them without even trying that will inspire the people around them. That's yeah. how we're going to change the world. Like we really believe that if a million people commit to positive change and they make it happen, we will have made the world a better place. And that's, that's when the tour is over. The tour is over when we, we see the word Ula everywhere. We see it now on tattoos and bumper stickers wow. and t-shirts and hats. That's cool. But when people are living it and we can go anywhere in the country and they're saying, okay, how's your ULA? You're like, no, I need to spend more time with my family. Yeah. Oh, I got to handle that credit card debt. When ULA becomes a word and people understand that what, what winning really looks like is a life that's rich and full in all seven areas, not just totally. money and business. So, yeah. An amazing story from the road, Sydney, is we were actually up in the top part of Montana and we were driving through this mountain pass. And that bus was not designed to drive through any kind of mountain pass or oh, snow no. ever. <laughs> and we're driving through this mountain pass and we have this rule on the bus that we cannot complain ever. Um, and if we do, we have to like ask for it. Like I need three minutes to just complain. Cause I am like either 120 degrees in the bus or it's like 40 below. Yeah. And you know, we we're like just laughing that, that we're trying to go through this mountain pass at 20 miles an hour with snow and freezing. Troy had these really dorky gloves on from like the gas station and we're trying to get it into spoke Missoula, Montana or Spokane, Washington for book signings that were going all the way up to Seattle and Portland. And we're driving in where like, this is, this is crazy. Like this makes no yeah. sense whatsoever. Troy's like, I'm retired. I got houses in like tropical <laughs> countries. What am I doing? And right at that moment, out of nowhere in the middle of Montana, a car pulls up beside us on this interstate. They had Minnesota license plate and they have a little sticker in the back of their window and they honk and they put their thumbs out the window, like keep going. Wow. And it's like, that's what it's all about yeah. because you, I have no idea the story of this person in Minnesota, what they were doing in Montana, but they could have been going on a family vacation. They, they could have been their dream trip, whatever it was, but they had a little, little sticker in the back of the car. And that's the thing. It just, just, we're going to keep going until we have a million stickers and then hopefully just keep going again uh, until it was everywhere. That is an awesome story because I think we all need, you know, that like little dose of motivation or inspiration or confirmation to keep going. And so over the last couple of years while you guys have been on tour, is there a story or something that you've heard from somebody that has just really stuck with you and, and has, you know, been that source of fuel tool to remind you of like, this is why I'm, why we're doing what we're doing. There's so many. I'm gonna Troy, take the first one and then I'll take, I'll take one of the other. I just, there's so many. It's crazy. I can only imagine. There's uh, there could be podcasts just on the individual stories we hear, but I'm yeah. going to let Dave pick an individual story. I'm going to tell your listeners just what I've learned just yeah, being on be the awesome. road, yeah. just in general, just in general. 
Like if you turn on the news and you turn on social media and you turn on whatever, and you just listen to the people in your circle, you're feeling hopeless many times. Like government's going to heck, country's going to heck, world's going to heck. Yeah. I am telling you that if you, you know, get off your screen and you get out and meet people you don't know that you wouldn't normally otherwise meet and you look them in the eyes and just start chatting about life, you will be hopeful. You will yeah. be hopeful that most people are good. Most people are kind and most people are loving and they want the same thing you want. They just want their family to be fed. They want a house to live in and they have some goals and dreams. Maybe it's travel. Maybe it's different than yours. Maybe it's a cool car. Maybe whatever it is, maybe it's a dream business, but we're much more alike than we are different. And, and the world is much better when you're out living in it than when you're looking at it from a screen. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, Troy, Troy gave me the hard task of picking one because it is like <laughs> 130,000 stickers on the bus and probably 100,000 amazing stories. Yeah. And we remember a lot of them. Um, the cool story of the guy at Alligator Alley or the dude with the LA, LA hat in upstate uh, or the New York Yankee hat in upstate California and the guy in West Virginia. Troy knows all, the, all these people. But I would say the number one, because it was the one that really started shaping the tour, was we wrote a book called Ula Fine Balance and Unbalanced World. And that's really what kicked off the whole Ula thing. It was the first time the process that we did for years, the process that I followed and was successful in the process that I quit following and became extremely unsuccessful. And when I retapped into that process, I found success again, or at least found balance again to start finding more success in the process. Troy's followed his whole life. And that's why he is the guru. That process became that book. And then that book led to this teaching others and, and the book, the bus tour. And when we left Coronado, it was a fun father-son trip. We had our two boys. We were loud music, a Vida bus on the coast of California, um, collecting stickers along the way. And we got, um, we started driving up the Pacific Coast Highway. I think we're right outside um, Malibu area. Troy, you can correct me if I'm wrong. In that area. And the, and the boys were like, we've been in the car all day, Venice Beach, Huntington Beach, everywhere. We've been in the bus all day collecting dreams. We're tired. We see the ocean off the left side of the window. The sun is setting. Let's go play in the ocean. So we were up in that area. We pulled the bus over. We're in this little parking lot. And the boys just like instantly bolted teenage boys into the ocean. They're swimming and we're hanging out. And we're like, man, this is so fun. This is so fun. This is going to be such an epic trip. We had no idea where it was going to go. It's just following our passion. And it was all about having fun. Like this is going to be fun. Our boys are having fun. We're having fun. This is amazing. And there was this beautiful couple uh, in the beach with a professional photographer taking pictures, a husband and wife, two little daughters, like young uh, mm -hmm. daughters. And they're taking these pictures and they're dressed perfect. The sunset was perfect. Everything. They're taking these pictures and we just watch. We're like, God, oh, that's a, what a beautiful family. Like God, lucky. Like they're living Ula. They're gorgeous. Like living Ula. And they came walking up to the bus and they walked over and the lady, the, the mom, the wife was like, what are you guys doing? Like the bus looked like it had chicken pox with all these half full of stickers. <laughs> He's like, what are you guys doing? And, and we're like, we're just trying to connect America, connect the world back to dreaming again. So if you want to grab a sticker and you want to write down your dream and your kids want to, we'll help them out. It would be amazing. And the kids grab stickers and, you know, they do their thing. And the dad grabbed a sticker and, and the mom grabbed a sticker and she filled out a family sticker, which is an orange sticker. She filled out a family sticker and they, we high five them. They put it on the bus. Well, as soon as they left, because this is where the tour just started, right? The first thing we do as soon as they leave is like, let's go read their stickers. So we went around to the back of the bus where they all put their family stickers and we read the kid's sticker and the husband's sticker and then her sticker, she wrote to survive stage four cancer long enough to see my daughters become women. Mm. And that was in that moment, getting back in the bus is the bus tour is fun. The bus tour is awesome. We eat great food. We meet great people, but there's more to the bus tour than that. It's more than just having fun. There's a purpose behind it. And the purpose is to bring people back to Ula. And to bring people back to showing them that they can live their real life. They can, in this mist of chaos, they can live their real life. And you have this woman that was going through undoubtedly one of the craziest things you could go through, one of the most stressful things you go to. Yeah. And she was having fun with her kids. She was laughing. She was grateful for us. She high-fived us. She thanked us. And she drove away. And that's, that was like 
that is what it's all about. Like that's what it's about. Then that really just, that, that just changed the tour for us. And it really just set everything off on a different path of like, we are now really purpose driven. It's more than just having like fun on the bus and collecting dreams. It's really, let's go make this happen. Let's go make the world a better place. And, and that's, that's probably one of my favorite stories because it's the most impactful story that early on in the tour. Wow. I mean, to have that that early on to, to meet her and their family and her story. And I, I love what you said, too. It's about connecting people, connecting people in general, but bringing them back to a place where they can feel like they can dream again and, and dream big. And I think often, you know, there are, there are fears or um, limitations or emotions that we have that get in our way. But when you hear a dream like that, you know, just to be healthy and survive stage four breast cancer to see, you know, your daughters grow up. I mean, talk about putting it all into perspective. Yeah. I think we, we stress about so much and, and I've, I've alluded to this like three times in the podcast, this might be a record, uh, <laughs> but we live in just such an amazing time yeah. to do amazing things. And I think people need to, we have this whole section in the book and that we talk about on the road when we're on tour too, called blockers, just things that stop you. So you have the three simple steps to your life. It's where you are today in the seven areas of life, where you want to go, which is what the bus is about. And then the third step, which we haven't talked too much about, but it's taking action every day. What are you going to do every day yeah. to reach your goals, to get to the life of your dreams, the dream that you put on the bus? And then what happens is if you say, okay, today I'm going to get up and I'm going to start a podcast. Like when you started your podcast, you probably ran into fear. You probably ran into a little self-sabotage. Like maybe I'm not good enough to do a podcast. Will I be smart? All this stuff that people run into no matter what they do. And there's a whole section called blockers. That's going to get in the way and it's going to hold you back. Fear, guilt, self-sabotage, anger, laziness. And, and there's, a, there's a process to break through that and, and to make sure that you're moving towards your real life. But yeah, that's, it's a, it's just an amazing time to live the life you dreams, be transparent. But as humans, we're going to run into all kinds of blockers. But you just have to understand at your core that you work through those blockers. Be patient with this and just keep working towards your ultimate dreams in life. I love that you touched on these blockers because I think there are things that these are things that we face every day. And you said it, we're human. We you even create them, you know, as as time goes on. And then so are there certain tools or emotions or practices that you've relied on that then you also share that, you know, can help people push past these blockers? Anybody who set a goal, which we all have, and if that goal hasn't happened, you've likely run into a blocker. Yeah. It's been studied. I mean, it's fear, it's laziness, it's self-sabotage, like worthiness issues. We all run into blockers. So the key is, all right, number, there's really a three-step process. We call that ready, set, go. And ready is simply calling it out. I'm starting a podcast and I'm fearful. I'm yeah. fearful nobody will download it. I'm fearful I'm going to sound stupid. I'm fearful, you know, whatever. Fearful I'm not going to be able to get guests. Whatever the fears are, you're just saying, I'm feeling fear in this moment. But then the, the set part of it in Ready, Set, Go is set it in its place. What does my life look like if I give into this blocker? Mm -hmm. If I decide, you know what, everybody's right. Podcasts don't work. There's only a couple people succeeding in it, you know. Um, what does my life look like if I give into this blocker? But then on the contrary, what does it look like if I overcome? Well, maybe I'll get a guest and lead to another guest and people will download and I'll be able to get my message out there and I'll change the world and I'll have an impact and I'll be yeah. able to monetize it, whatever your goal is. So the set is set it in its place. What does it look like if I give into it? What does it look like if I overcome? And the goal is just 20 seconds of insane courage. Yeah. Like what am I going to do in this moment? What am I going to do in this moment to overcome? Well, I'm going to schedule a podcast. I'm going to advertise whatever that is. What is the actionable step? And that's the part I think we need to talk about a little because we talked about step one and step two. Yeah which is like, where am I? Where do I want to go? Most self-help books and most self-help seminars stop there. Um, step three is like, when I wake up in the morning and I have big goals and dreams, what does that look like? I mean, what yeah. from a real, do I grab a pencil? Do I email somebody? Do I make a phone call? Like what, if I have a big goal and dream, what does that look like? So you have to remember that even if you have an amazing goal and big dreams, it requires daily and consistent action, even in the face of adversity, even in the mm. face of failure, even in the face of challenges. It's just waking up every day and looking at that big goal and dream in the distance and moving toward it. 20 seconds of insane courage that then can turn into 40 seconds to a whole minute. I mean, that's amazing. It's about building that momentum. No, absolutely. That's and that is the key. And that's the, that's what we find the, the people who really succeed. So we see we run into a lot of people that have put crazy big dreams on our bus. And if yeah. we follow back, if we follow back to those people um, and we say, OK, and people have done we've we've had more people that 
people we can count who put a weight loss goal of 100 plus pounds and lost it. We have people who wanted to make a million dollar business and they've done it and write books and uh, people put whatever dream and they, they do amazing things. The yeah. people that succeed do two things from the people that don't. Number one is they learn to overcome what's blocking them, those blockers. And number two, they take action every day. That's it. It's not any more complicated than that. It's like they have a clear vision of what they want. They understand they're going to run into these blockers and they have a strategy to overcome. And every day they move forward toward it. It's really that simple. I think the other thing too is, is I've, I've alluded to this too before, to just the patience when you're going through that. And I talk about that uh, because that's my thing, you know. That's my thing. As the Ula seeker, I'm the. I got this energy. I'm the impatient one. But you, you see people that say like, you know, there's two sides of that. Is one is you want to hustle and you want to build and you want to get out of debt and you want to, you know, go live your dreams. But they're also, you know, you might be 19 or 20. You have a long life yeah. to be in and work through the process. Don't give up too soon and just keep taking those small steps forward. I think that's the key, you know, taking those small steps. And yeah, sometimes you're going to get knocked down. Sometimes things aren't going to go the way you plan. But I mean, if there's anything that I've learned, and I'm sure you guys, you know, would totally agree with this, is that it's about being willing to keep taking those steps forward, regardless of whatever you're met with in the moment, whatever adversity that you're met with in the moment. And We've talked so much about dreams and, you know, just the importance of connecting with other people in their dreams. But I'd love to know from you guys, I mean, what is your biggest dream, you know, moving forward? I can start with that and then Troy can chime in on that one, too, because like you, you have these dreams for all all parts of life. But I want to direct it more towards Ula. Yeah. Uh, and my big dream and I have no idea how. Um, but I just know by going out with the bus and introducing people to Ula and getting more stickers on the bus, this, it leads in that direction. But someday that Ula bus is in the Smithsonian under pop culture as a bus that went across the country, gave hope, united a country. Every sticker on that bus is united to the sticker that you put over top of it. That was from a city, you know, a hundred miles down the road, people's dreams and goals. And I, that would be my big goal someday is to like take my grandkids into the Smithsonian and there's a little bus sitting there. Our, our collective goal, the first the first sticker we put on the bus was to change the world with a word, um, this word Ula. But that being said, I have a personal one in the category of Ula. And it was just announced two days ago and we didn't make it. But Webster Dictionary publishes new words every year. Two days ago, they announced 840 new words and Ula wasn't one of them. So my goal yeah. is before I leave this planet that ULA is a real word in the Webster Dictionary because there's millions of people using the hashtag. People tattoo it on their body. It's on all kinds of clothing. But I want a word that for generations to come, they can open a Webster's Dictionary and go, what is ULA? And it goes, it's a state of awesomeness when your life is balanced and growing in the seven key areas of fitness, finance, family, feel, faith, friends, and fun. That's, that's my goal. Okay. I mean, we've got Smithsonian, we've got the dictionary. I mean, guys, this is, this is amazing and I have no doubt it will happen. And I'm so grateful that this is something that you guys started and that you're sharing. And thank you for sharing all of the tools and the steps behind, you know, living this ULA lifestyle. And I'm really excited about the bus tour. I know it's coming to Los Angeles next month um, in December. So yeah, so where can everybody find you guys and, and connect and and learn more? The, the best place to hang out, a good starting spot is ulalife.com because that, that will give you a background of the tour. You'll be able to see the bus. You'll be able to see all of our social media connections. And Dave and I hang out on social media. So that's a great place to just connect. Um, in person, the tour uh, is going to be, uh, we're in Las Vegas the 7th and 8th at the Hard Rock. It's a sold-out event called Ulapalooza, but then the bus will be rolling over to L.A. Um, for a book signing at the Grove, Barnes & Noble, on the 11th at 7 p.m., and then down to San Diego on the, the 12th, 11th in, in L.A., 12th in San Diego at Westgate, Barnes & Noble, at 7 p.m. as well. And we'd love to not only see you, but get your dream on the bus. So I will include all your information in the show notes. So everybody can find you. And thank you so much again for coming on Seek the Joy podcast and just really sharing so much and so many just actionable tools and resources for people. I, I know I know everyone is going to love this conversation. So thank you so much. I right, appreciate you. you. Great. see the ULA 
Bella Dream bus tour in person. I mean, I've included some pictures in the show notes and um, in the graphics for this week's episode, but I feel like it just doesn't do it justice, all those layers of stickers and dreams. And it is so cool to hear Dave and Troy's mission behind Ula and the Dream bus tour. And so I hope that you guys enjoyed this week's episode and I hope that you were able to take away some good, you know, actionable advice and items to incorporate into your own life. I know, I know that I definitely did. And if you guys want to support Seek the Joy podcast, support my work on the show, I would be so grateful. Make sure to share this episode or share your favorite episode or the show with your friends and your family and on your social media networks. Hit subscribe in the Apple Podcast app or wherever it is, you know, that you listen to podcasts and follow us on our social media pages at Seek the Joy Podcast. That's really where all of the conversation outside of our weekly shows goes down. Um, We're also on Patreon. I'll share that in the show notes as well. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to connect with you guys. Thank you for being here. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this one and have a wonderful rest of your week. Have a great weekend and I will see you right back here next week for another Seek the Joy Tuesday. Tuesday.